Hey guys, it's PC Tech, and I'm back to you with another how to video. I haven't done one for a while now. Before you do any sort of overclocking, you really want to make sure that you have sufficient cooling in your case and also for your CPU and maybe motherboard. It really depends on how far you want to push your CPU and platform. Now, any kind of overclocking starts with the BIOS. And usually you get into the BIOS by pressing the delete key. I took some uh, shots from my screen just to show you all the settings that I am using for my CPU. Keep in mind, not every CPU is exactly the same since silicon is a natural um, material and it can vary in quality. So we are right now on my post screen of the BIOS and you can see all like the information about time and date and the language of your BIOS. I also changed the um, SATA configuration on my BIOS from IDE to AHCI because I'm running Windows 10 and an SSD with 500 gigabyte and I really want to run it over AHCI than like IDE. Then when you go back and move with your keys more to the right side, you can get to the um, advanced mode and then you can choose the jump reconfiguration. And you should actually see this screen now. It usually is at auto and when you change the AI overclock tuner from auto to manual, you will get way more settings that you can change. I went with um, the CPU ratio multiplier or like the setting of 9. Now the number 9 will be multiplied with the FSP frequency that you're running on your motherboard and the result of it will be the frequency of your CPU. Might sound a little bit confusing but it makes total sense and you will get used to it. So the CPU ratio is very often limited unless you're using an Intel Core 2 Quad Extreme Edition CPU which comes with an unlocked multiplier. Now my CPU, the Q6600, comes with a multiplier of 9. It is the max multiplier, you can go down all the way to number 6, but I'm running it at number 9. Then FSP is wrapped to Northbridge, I leave that one to auto. As I felt like it didn't give me any stability enhancement. And then I went with the FSP frequency of 440. Now my motherboard could do 500 easily, but for the CPU it is just a bit too much. So 440 is okay and when we um, multiply 440 times 9 we will get 3.9 something gigahertz on our CPU which is a very respectable overclock then DDR2 frequency I went with 1057 which um, is the second um, lowest setting that I could actually choose for my memories and as I'm running rather high-end DDR2 memory my sticks are absolutely fine with these settings but um, if you're running like DDR2 800 megahertz RAM, you want to make sure that you're running them at 880 megahertz and not at 1056 because they may cause stability issues on your system. Then maybe you will have to change the latency on your memory because you overclocked it a little bit. I did do that. My RAM would usually run at 44412. But as I'm overclocking them from 800 to 1057 megahertz, I change the timings to 55516. All the other settings on the memory will be left on auto, as they just really don't affect um, stability, but they could enhance um, performance on my system. Then when you go a little bit further down, you will find the voltage table of your motherboard. Now, I want to go with a voltage of 1.625 volts, which is too high. It is too high. I just want to point that one out. Please don't leave me a comment down below telling me it is too high. I know it is too high. However, it is a Q6600 and based on a 65 nanometer lithography. Therefore, it just needs more voltage to achieve such high frequencies. If you are like aiming for 3.6 gigahertz, you can actually go all the way down to 1.35 volts and it should 
probably be fine at these settings. Then the CPU PLL voltage will be changed to 1.8 volts, the FSB termination voltage to 1.5 volts, as we are overclocking by using the FSB method, so you will have to support your system a little bit with a tiny bit more, more, more voltage than it would usually use. Then DRAM voltage can usually be read from the sticker that is on your uh, module and if you're overclocking it you might increase it just a slight bit. Don't go too far with it otherwise you might uh, run into serious issues with your memory. Then north bridge voltage will be set to 1.75 as I'm running um, 4 sticks of memory and also rather high FSB frequencies. I really want to make sure that my north bridge voltage is running at yeah sufficient voltage. Then south bridge voltage, I didn't do any change and clock over charging voltage to 1 volt, load line calibration enabled, this one is a very important one, you want to make sure it is enabled because as the tension gets um, higher on your CPU, um, it, will, it will also stress the VRM on your motherboard more and it might cause some volt dips and you want to accommodate that by hiring a little bit the voltage up so that it is um, a more flat yeah, voltage for your CPU. Then CPU GTL voltage reference will be set to 0.65x as it um, will help with interferences between uh, yeah, components in your CPU and also um, on your motherboard when changing the Northbridge TTL voltage reference to 0.67 times. Then the CPU spread spectrum will be set to disabled, the PCIe spread spectrum will be set to disabled and the CPU clock skew to delay 100 PS A Northbridge clock skew same delay 100 ps then there are also some settings that you can do um, in your cpu configuration and i usually just disable everything especially c1 e support as it would downclock your cpu when it isn't being used and yeah this may cause stability issues All right, after you've done all your overclocking, you wanna make sure your system is running stable and you wanna run some benchmarks. And I'm just gonna show you my results with my Q6600 at 3.9 something gigahertz at 1.625 volts, which will drop actually under heavy load to 1.56 volts. As you can see here on my CPU ID of ADA64, you will see all the frequency um, from the FSB, the CPU itself, then the voltage, then the memory and the timings of my memory. Then I ran Cinebench R15 multi-core and the CPU got um, a score of 388, it fluctuated a little bit, I also achieved um, 390 points once. Yeah, it is just the nature of this benchmark. Then I also ran the Cinebench R15 single threaded um, benchmark and I got a score of 104 points, which is actually really respectable. When you think about the AMD Bulldozer FX3850, uh, which would only score 96 points in single threaded applications, so like the Cinebench R15 single threaded benchmark. Then I also ran 3D Mark Firestrike, um, a custom benchmark, only the CPU as the physics score, and I achieved 6324 points, or like mostly around 20 FPS, which is, yeah, it is a decent score, especially for such an old CPU. Then I also ran um, uh, Geekbench 4.0. And the single core score was at 2,523 points and the multi-core score at 7,307 points. Yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this um, how-to guide, which is uh, more of a, like a baseline of showing you which settings you may want to consider when you do any overclocking. Overclocking involves a lot of time. Um, you will have to trial and error your CPU and motherboard 
and yeah i will see you in the next video with a new vlog probably bye